Hey. So recently I made this animation in Desmos for the math art contest, and if you haven't already seen it, you should, because that's kind of what this video is about, you know? Anyways, I thought it would be nice to make a video explaining how I made it, since making an animation in a graphing calculator isn't quite as straightforward as you'd think it to be. Before I even started to make anything in Desmos, I thought it would be nice to outline what I wanted to do so that I wouldn't just be freestyling and putting stuff in places that it didn't make sense. This year I wanted my graph to sync with a song, so I chose one of my favorite songs by Creo, Unveil, and made a storyboard of when different stuff should happen in the animation. Another thing I wanted before I started actually graphing was to have some tools at my disposal, so I made some functions for the more complicated operations I would be using a lot, like bezier curves, smooth easing, linear interpolation, rotation, and I even took my entire 3D rendering engine that I'd made before and I compressed it into one function that takes in a point and a camera angle to plot it in 3D. Now that I had all my important tools, I made a document to keep track of all the other important stuff I might need to use to make the animation, and I could finally get to work. Get pranked. So I can't just go into this splattering around some random expression spaghetti and expect to come up with a masterpiece, so I need some more planning on how the graph will actually come together and be, you know, animated. To start with, I broke down my ideas into individual scenes. Each of these scenes I could make on a separate graph, and then combine them with a main one using JavaScript and Desmos's API. Each scene can have a master slider variable that controls the animation of that scene, and all of those master variables can be controlled by one centralized variable. In a breakdown of the graph structure, you can see this, in that anim is tied to every component along with the tools mentioned earlier. However, other than that, every component has its own internal network, so that they can be cleanly put together. I won't be going over all of the scenes that I made, because that would take forever and I already have left notes on scenes describing how they work in a uh, questionable level of detail. Anyways, the first few scenes I wanted to set the expectation of the graph so that it could later be broken. I made a fake Desmos background using parametrics, and using an old program I'd made, Desmos Lock, was able to approximate a sketch with a bunch of bezier curves, and animate them based on their parametric boundaries. After that, I made some parametrics to approximate the sketch I'd made, and fed them along with the background into the 3D function I'd created. I also used some easing to make it look nice, and ta-da, animation. Another scene I particularly liked is the flag thingy. I made a sketch in Affinity Designer and used various expressions to build up and animate the different shapes in it. The most tedious of which were definitely the gears, as I had to design an expression that generated a set of points in this shape. Then I just applied some custom colors, rotation, and easing. This was interesting to animate, because I've never made an origami crane before, so I used 3D models I could find as a reference, then drew out polygons using my 3D function, where the points looked like they should be. I also added in a little glow by overlaying low opacity circles of different sizes to give it a little more pop. All of the camera information was animated using easing, and based off the master slider for the crane as you would expect. I love watching cool math animations, and these came instantly to mind when I thought of what I wanted to make. Handling the way they interlocked and rotated was actually slightly harder than I expected, but other than that, this section was fairly straightforward. Each hypercycloid rotates inside one of the higher degree with the camera fixed on the one at the center. While this wasn't necessarily as impressive from a math standpoint, I did enjoy messing around while trying to get different color schemes and glowing effects to make it look as nice as possible. Getting a smooth transition to the Rouleau Triangle was also pretty difficult. Speaking of the Rouleau Triangle, it was a pretty simple parametric animation that I extended into 3D, and after that I decided to try and show the construction of it using circles. By far the most difficult part of it, though, was just trying to find a function to approximate the boundaries of the box that contains the triangle. Eventually I settled on this monster, which looks intimidating, but really just makes a staggered cosine graph. 
For this, I made a list to contain the set of points that would draw each node, and fed them into a 3D function, and then into a polygon that I colored using a list of colors based on what notes are being pressed at what times. That's right, this piano is fully programmable to play anything, as long as you have a list of notes to play and what times to play them at. Also, fun fact, I transcribed this bit of the song, so all of the notes are accurate. Unfortunately for me, when I tried to render all the piano notes, I ran into the slight problem of having to do them expression by expression. Since I can't enumerate color over a list of points without using a 2D array, which isn't currently supported by Desmos. Could I have done this differently using parametrics? Probably. Definitely. But it is what it is, you know? The circuit I decided to do was an LCD display because I really think it's cool that you can take binary signals and convert them to base 10 numbers. This component is massive on the visual of the graph, but mostly only because each component was an individual expression referencing one of the main functions for handling the main parts. Did you know that dodecahedrons have cubes inside of them? Me either. That's why I thought it was so cool when I figured it out that I had to make an animation showcasing how that works. From a technical standpoint, I used sets of points and applied them to my 3D function to render it along with the changing camera angle and distance. This was, by far, no competition, the most difficult component to animate of this entire graph. Allow me to elaborate. An icosphere is an icosahedron with its surface subdivided into smaller triangles. This means to make it, I would have to make a way of generating n subdivision triangular meshes. After that, I would need to remap the corners of those triangles to 3D space. Not so hard, right? The problem is, lists of points are only connected one by one, so creating the illusion of a subdivided triangular surface would require two lists of points, which I painstakingly had to map out and find functions for the x and y of. Great! So now just apply them to an icosphere, right? Mm, no. I also had to redesign my mapping function since I was using cylindrical coordinates, because as the triangles reached the top of the mesh, they all converged, which made sense for the middle of the graph, but didn't for the top, because all of the triangles would naturally converge, which unintentionally completely broke the graph. And my brain. So after creating a separate transform function for poles, I was finally getting something that resembled an icosphere. After masking different faces based off the rotation and displacing the radius of each point, it finally started coming together. I loved making this because even though it's pretty simple, it looks really cool. The color changes by breaking down the curve into tiny segments and assigning each segment a color, then as it gets animated, changing the colors. I also made a higher line width lower opacity version to give a glowing effect around the curve. While the math for it is pretty straightforward, I thought it was a neat discovery that I could lock animated graphs as they moved, so to demonstrate this I used metaballs. This was also a reference to the two videos I made covering these topics earlier, so if you want you should check those out. Making a tiling pattern in Desmos is easier than you would think, you just need to modulate the x and y values you plug in. To make things easier on myself though, I borrowed some of the patterns I used in the title card of the animation that I made last year. So Fourier series work by having a bunch of orbits of different sizes and speeds all work together to trace out a path. After playing around, I came up with some neat random values to control the paths and put them all together by layering slightly offset values and plotting them parametrically in 3D. This worked basically the same way as the Fourier series, but increasing the orbit speeds and decreasing the orbit sizes. Instead of filling in the path that was traced, I layered curves of different line widths. I kinda started running out of ideas, so I thought to myself, what if I just added a bunch of Lissajous curves? Kinda the same way that I made Fourier fractals. Then I decided to change the colors and animate the camera at a different angle. By using cosine interpolation, I was able to smoothly transition between random points. Then I extended that into 2D by interpolating the strands of random points. 
Then I extended that into 3D by graphing it using my 3D function and adding some background glow by layering opacity of different line widths. Story time! Around midway through making this graph, Eli, the creator of Desmos, who is also subscribed to me, hi Eli, mentioned in the Desmos Discord that graphs would also be judged on performance this year. Okay, so obviously this is not going to go over well, so what if I made a different graph that wasn't as laggy but I had a link to the laggy graph on it? On that note, I came up with this graph, which is made using cosine interpolated noise to create detail while also being performant. It's also all done in around 50 expressions, which isn't too bad if I say so myself. I don't really have much more to say, I'll link the relevant sources in the description. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and thanks for the insane amount of attention I've been getting recently, I really do appreciate it. That's like, wow. Wow. Holy crap.